Thank you very much, Hillel, and uh, thank you for gathering us, to you and your team, for this very timely conference, I have to say. And also thank you for the work that you and your team have been doing for the last decade on UNRWA, exposing many of the things that you've just referred to and uh, bringing them, them to light. Unfortunately, not many listened, as they should have, and especially not the United Nations. Indeed, I am coming right now from the opening of the Human Rights Council, where the President of the General Assembly himself said that UNRWA is indispensable lifeline. And of course, the Secretary General Gutierrez said that UNRWA is the backbone of assistance to the Palestinians. So indeed, as you've mentioned, there is closing of ranks among the different uh, agencies of the United Nations to make us believe that there is no alternative but I'm here to say that there is an alternative and there must be an alternative to UNRWA, must be an alternative. If anything, that October 7th showed us, and I don't think that too many were surprised, but showed us very clearly and very vividly, is that A, workers of UNRWA itself were involved in the massacre of October 7th, directly involved, that's A that UNRWA workers held hostages in their homes. We know it from returned hostages that they were held. And soon we will hear also from Ayelet. We know that Hamas has exploited UNRWA facilities for years and years, and they were shielded basically by UNRWA facilities, like the headquarters, the database that was found under the UNRWA headquarters. But this is just one example. Um, the fact that Hamas diverted the aid supplied by UNRWA that was supposed to go to Palestinian civilians was evident, but what the IDF has found in the last more than last four months, evident for everyone who wants to see it, who really wants to look in and see it and acknowledge. The data is there, the pictures are there, the information is there. So even if there was any debate before October 7th, whether it, the intelligence is correct, whether it's just rumors, which it wasn't, because we had evidence over the years as well, I think that the argument and the uh, disagreements should stop. And the international community and the United Nations itself must acknowledge that Hamas has actually, and together with UNRWA, basically, in, I want to say interlinked, Interlinked because you have such an infiltration of UNRWA, of Hamas into the UNRWA workers that in a sense, what the UNRWA is allowing Hamas to do is they're allowing them to shield them, to embed. What we're doing is the international community is paying UNRWA and UNRWA basically is allowing Hamas to do what they do best, is to embed themselves in among civilian population. And this must stop. I can tell you from my own experience, the clock here is making me nervous. Uh, in a, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> that I was the director of the UN political affairs uh, between 2000, in Israel, between 2009 and 2012, and I, I dealt directly with UNRWA. In 2011, we already wrote an official letter to UNRWA indicating names of people that we suspected are terrorists. We never got a response. I can tell you the two of the people that are on this list are still employed by UNRWA today. Not surprised, right? Teacher and a principal. The same in 2012, we wrote another letter. No surprise there, no answer there. And also some of the people later on, it was discovered in 2017 that one of them became really a leader of Hamas, so he couldn't keep his day job in UNRWA as well. But it's not something that started only in October 7th. We've already alerted UNRWA officially, and that's only from my own experience. I can't say uh, what happened after I left, but uh, um, I, I, I will not touch about the refugee definition of UNRWA because I know that both Einat and Nadi probably will touch it in length, but there is no doubt in my mind that it's also uh, perpetuating the conflict itself. The, what is being taught in the schools has been discussed for years. Very little was done about it. But at the end of the day, what Mr. Gutierrez and Mr. Lazzarini need to ask themselves is how many of the uh, attackers on October 7th, 
not only those that were directly, I mean, those that were directly involved, not only those directly employed by UNRWA, how many of them were educated in UNRWA school? We're talking about thousands of terrorists that infiltrated Israel. How many were educated by UNRWA school? And certainly, it seems that uh, the schools of UNRWA have cultivated a culture of hate and not a culture of peace that we are all hoping for over the years. To me, it's clear that Israel will not be able to continue to work with UNRWA in Gaza. To me, it's clear. Uh, we do welcome uh, uh, the countries that have suspended the assistance uh, to UNRWA. And we welcome the two uh, investigations that were open. I do want to say about the, uh, the, in the international review group that is headed by the foreign, <coughs> former foreign minister of, uh, of France, <coughs> Colonna, they, they have included certain institutions, indeed Nordic ones, but what we would <laughs> expect is also to include experts on security, counterterrorism, and vetting process, because the vetting process obviously has failed completely, completely. And this is the responsibility of the employer. When the United Nations employs someone, they should have a clear vetting process, which they don't have. They don't have. And you cannot roll the blame to someone else. You are the employer. So we would expect this uh, inquiry also to include experts, not only humanitarian experts, but also to include experts on counterterrorism, security, and vetting, as I said. And also the TOR, the, TOR, the terms of reference of their um, commission, uh, needs to be more, um, more concise, not too broad, but more concise. What are we looking at? We are looking to see how do you actually prevent the employment of terrorists. I mean, it sounds as simple as that, but that's not in the TOR. That's not in the terms of reference. How do you ensure, how do you make sure that in future, you won't employ a terrorist. How do you ensure that Hamas or the Islamic Jihad will not infiltrate your organizations and use your infrastructure to their benefit? Uh, so this all needs to be, needs, it remains to be seen how they will deal with it. Instead, in, indeed, it's a very short time of, span of uh, investigation that they have allocated themselves. But I have to say, uh, for me, uh, representing Israel, knowing what we know today on October 7th about the involvement, the direct involvement of UNRWA employees in the massacre, uh, I don't see a way for Israel to continue to work with UNRWA in Gaza. <coughs> so thank you very much. <coughs>